Hey everybody, how's it going? John here with a good scroll saw portrait design and woodworks. Uh, if you didn't watch us today, <laughs> we did a lot of work. We did a lot of sanding. Uh, Carrie was over there staining. I started this pattern project from Jim Bloom. It's a multi-feather pattern. And uh, we got uh, Herb in the room with us right now. And uh, there he is. Say hey, Herb. <laughs> <laughs> he muted himself. It's okay. We saw you say hi. We, we, we saw you wave, though. It's fine. <laughs> oh, sorry about that. <laughs> Hello, Pat. Yeah, uh, pass over in the chat for now. And uh, so I got my new camera. I got a different angle on it now. So I'm going to see uh, how this is going to work for us. Uh, basically, I got this pattern from Jim Bloom this morning. And uh, I said, oh, I know what I'm going to cut today. So <laughs> I've been slacking on it. I, I I did some cutting earlier on it. So we're gonna uh, try and get some more of this done, and I'll probably end up finishing it tomorrow. But when I do, uh, I got a cool idea of how I'm gonna mount it up because I actually took this pattern and modified it a bit. And I hope he's gonna be proud of me the way I did it. And uh, so we're gonna scroll this out, fix this up, and any questions, comments, let us know in the in the comment section uh but what we did today but what we're going to be doing in the future uh let us know herb's going to be talking to us so just let me know i'll just switch the camera over down here and we'll start scrolling away scrolling 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 let john get to scrolling and get herb to shut up john show <laughs> well ain't no worse than when uh uh, Charles and Cliff and Ava the were all on earlier. Now, that is Mary, uh, Larry, Mo, and Curly for you. <laughs> exactly. Uh, is that too much light for you? Uh, it's too much light, isn't it? Yes, sir. Of course, it is. Is that better light? It's better anyway. Well, it's not up to us. It's up to you. Oh, you know what? I saw you cutting it. I can do this, though. I can bring my new camera out here. <clears throat> yeah, see, I think that's worse, actually. That's a little better, I suppose. Yeah, and I got no light on it at all. Yeah, uh, you put it to where the, you need the light, and we'll deal with it. Yeah, y'all see it in the end. Well, it's good, so. <laughs> so, I'm just checking some stuff here. Do, 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 do. All right. Oh, yeah, I got some more, I, I, I got some more followers on Twitch now, which is good. Uh, I'm at uh, 10 now, I think. Oh, that's good. I only got one. <laughs> yeah, I think that's me, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> I'll get more over there as soon as I get some videos going. I'm a little camera shy. Camera shy. Brian Bradburn from uh, YouTube saying hello, everybody. Hello, hey, Brian. Brian. How's it going today? Yeah, I got 10 followers over on uh, Twitch now. I need 40 more. I need 40 more followers on Twitch to get my next achievement. <laughs> It's kind of cool, though. What happens you, if you get after, over 40? Uh, you can... Um, uh, I got to find out where it is that again. Um, if you get over 40, I believe it is... No, wrong one. Um, to, get, uh, to start getting to your next level, I need an average... 
I got 1.4 average viewers, which I achieved that. I got four unique viewers. I achieved that. So I need, uh, oh, wait, here it is. Uh, I need to, I need 50 followers. I need to stream for eight hours, which I've already done. I need to stream on seven different days, which I've already done. And I need an average of three viewers per show. I only have 0.9. Uh, that'll get me to affiliate, which will start me on the path to monetization. That'll but, work. But, you know, it's, I'm not, not really blah, blah, ready to start making money. But whatever, you know, whatever helps. Yeah. And then I think with uh, monetization on uh, on Twitch, then it'll help for uh, monetization on YouTube. Yeah, whatever money you're making, you know, pay for supplies or the internet or... Oh, I'll buy better cameras and better sound equipment, maybe. Yep. Because when I went down and picked up this camera, I was asking about microphones as well. And he said, oh, yeah, you get this, this multi-directional microphone from Yeti. And it was like a $160 microphone. I'm like, eh, I don't know. I think that's going to pick up every sound in my room. He goes, nah, everybody uses it all the time for gaming and stuff. I'm like, yeah, it's not really gaming. It's woodworking. Yeah, it might pick up all the sound then. I like this wood though. It's real wood. It's live edge. It's a quarter inch thick chunk that I picked up at the heart uh, my wood store. Oh, I was going to ask you earlier if that's uh, one of the pieces you got from your buddy. No, no, uh, those were all burls. But this is, uh, I picked up four, four of these. I picked up four of these. They're uh, two foot long. Got yeah, the two, two foot long pieces. They're rough cut. They're still live edge. So I still got a live edge on both sides of them. And uh, I think it looks kind of cool, actually. I, I actually should have left that as one of the one of the uh, feather edges. It's got a, it's, it's got nice pillowing on it, and uh, I basically just have to sand it, sand it down to get it smooth. But like I said, they're, they're a quarter inch thick, uh, two foot wide by uh, the shortest end. Let's go with eight inch wide, and it was nine bucks a board, so it's pretty decent price for. Uh, and I think it's maple. It's not maple. I think it might be poplar. I really like the green in it though. It cuts real nice too. Cuts real nice. That's good. <clears throat> yeah, I gotta get out there sometime next week and go through all that junk, see what's good and what's not. Yeah, and source out new stuff and everything like that. I'd really, like to see you make a, I'd really like to see you make a goal with though, Herb. I really do. Yeah, I'll get back to it. It's just, you know, taking me a while. And, you know, we're fixing to get into the colder months. Yeah. And there's no way I can put a heater there. Well, you say colder months, but I got two inches of snow outside. And you're still in shorts, so... <laughs> yeah, of course, the lowest we've been so far, uh, a couple of nights we was down in uh, 48, but it didn't stay that long. Of course, we only had one heater going on in a trailer. Yeah, I think this was a big selling item for her because uh, it has the Arctic Pack insulation. Yeah. 
I had one of those on my first traders I bought. It was a Arctic package as well. I think he had uh, 10 inch. No, they weren't 10 inch walls. I think they were six inch walls instead of fours. And uh, they had like R, R28 insulation in them. Good to like minus 40, minus 50 almost, I think it was. Yeah, but I don't think I'll be getting in that cold of a weather. No. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, we use, uh, like those, uh, oil filled electric radiator heaters. Yep. She's got one of them, and then we've got a electric fake fireplace in here. It's got the little heater on it. With those two, when it got down to 48, 9 or whatever, both of us was in here sweating. Hey, let's turn one of these off. Oh. I want to do uh, the rest of our gang yet. Well, I don't know. We haven't heard from uh, Russ at all today, so I wonder if he even made it down there. Well, he might have made it down there. I don't know if he made it back from the airport. Uh, I'm going to send him a message and say, you okay? Well, I know he said he was going to take her out for breakfast, so. Yeah, um. Of course, one of the usuals, John Nate, he's over there watching, uh, dang, I can't even think of it, Jay. Oh, uh, Jay Bent? Yeah. I think we're all oh. getting addicted to woodworking videos. Were you on earlier when Stace was in here? Yeah. Uh, were you here when she asked me if I want to do a collaboration with her? No, I missed that. Yeah, so she wants to turn something, then send it over here and have me scroll something on for it. And yeah, like, she didn't. And I, I said, I've always wanted to do a collaboration, but nobody's ever asked, and I've, I've never really asked anybody either. So she's like, yeah, 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 let's talk afterwards. I'm like, sure. So I think it's kind of cool. Yeah. I know her and, uh, God, what's her name? Claire, they're, they've done a couple of collaborations. Claire from uh, Claire's Crafty Corner. Yep. Yeah, that resin, boy, I don't see how they can afford to do that. Two hundred bucks for two gallons, part A and B. Yeah, so my price is up here, but I don't know, it might be cheaper over there. Yeah, then there's another lady, I can't think of her name right off the top of my head, but... She's over there in Australia doing it. Well, it's like watching videos from uh, Nick Zemetti and all the resin that he uses and wastes and throws out. I'm like, that's unbelievable. That's pretty expensive. He's got some pretty far out videos too. You ever watch this Nick Zimetti? No. He's got some funny videos. <laughs> he's in uh, New Zealand. And he's got these cool little coins. Uh, he had a bunch of these coins made up, and they're all numbered. So every piece of work that he does, that he turns, he uh, puts these little buttons, uh, coins, in the bottom of all his work. And they're all numbered. So he, he, he knows each one that he did and where they went to. What was his name again? Nick Zametti. Z A M E T I. And I believe that there's a, uh, a scroll saw portrait behind him that uh, Charles did, I think. Um, okay, I'll go check him out after a while. Uh, 
Oh, yeah, the chant is awful quiet. Well, it is Saturday night. Yeah, and it's still early. Yeah, I looked at the clock a while ago, saying it was ten o'clock, and she was hollering at me. She knows it's nine thirty. Well, one of these clocks around here is wrong. <laughs> but it says you got four watching on uh, YouTube. Well, hello, everybody over on YouTube. Yeah, it says I got six viewers, actually. It says I got uh, two, 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 one on Twitch, one on Facebook, and four on YouTube. Oh, okay. Oh, now I got one on Twitch, four on YouTube. It's kind of cool that I can just pull it up and it shows me exactly where they're all at. Yeah. Well, I was going to go over there and watch on Facebook, but... but uh some reason Facebook don't want to load up. So I guess I'll just stay where I'm at. And we'll try to keep it on the rails. Yeah, I woke up and didn't know what time it was. Even took my shot too early. You did? Yeah. Is that going to screw you up any or what? No. Uh, Leonard Davis is in the house saying hi, John, and uh, hi, Herb. from Facebook. Hey, Leonard. How's it going today? <clears throat> I got a hard time remembering who was even in my chat earlier this morning. <laughs> So many people that come in and pop in and leave and everything else. So, yeah, there was a bunch of them. Uh, Josh, uh, John Nave, I think he popped in, but he was mostly doing that virtual deal. Larry was in. You were here. Well, I was in and out. I, I, I don't think I was totally there. <laughs> now he's over there on uh, YubaTube. <laughs> Mr. Davis. He's on both of them. <laughs> are you on both channels, uh, Leonard, or are you just on uh, switching back and forth? <laughs> Russ just sent me a message. Yep, she didn't even mention the frosting. <laughs> Maybe she didn't even hear LOL. Good. <laughs> so I doubt he's allowed to come back on. Did I just lose my mic? Oh, no. You, you muted yourself. Okay. Yeah, I muted myself. That way I could send him a message. Yeah, that's what I figured. Because it's a lot easier to uh, me to speak it than to type it. Leonard said no. He moved over to YouTube. YouTube. So I was looking at the pattern of these feathers when Jim uh, designed them, and apparently, apparently he said these were supposed to be twelve inch, twelve inch feathers. Yeah. 
So by me doing them like eight inch high, I'm uh, I'm losing a little bit of detail, like so, some of the like little little knobs on the feathers. But uh, they, I, I think it's still got quite a bit quite a bit in there. There though, this still looks pretty good though. Yeah, I think anything less than eight inches wouldn't uh done it. You really couldn't see most of the detail. Leonard says, Herb said he couldn't see Facebook. No, I couldn't get Facebook to load up is what the deal was. But on StreamYard, you can see the comments from YouTube, Facebook, Twitch, and uh, and that's all I'm on. <laughs> Yeah, because my, my little desk gets a little crowded here between uh, the phone, the laptop, the tablet, and this hairy little kid that keeps moving back and forth, kind of take my candy yeah. off the desk. But I'm just a pawn in his world. You think she's got to be the king of the castle? So I see Shay started working on a box today, like a, a yeah, 3D I, box. Yeah, I seen that earlier. Uh, Russ sent me a private message. He said, Wifey is printing up a storm in here tonight, so Polly won't be able to. <laughs> Might get in the chat, though. Yeah, I think them other fellas, they're in bed because I know Eva said she was going to bed earlier. Yeah. And then Stace was part, uh, trying to get uh, Max to bed. Charles, we know he probably crashed. Thanks, Leonard. This is looking good. <laughs> Well, I'm sure if I did do this bigger, it probably would have gone quicker. But because I like doing stuff small version, smaller version, it takes a little bit longer. But I think it's still turned out pretty good. Yeah. I just got to figure out what size dream catcher I'm going to make for this then. Well, if the feathers are eight inches, you probably need one about a foot. Yeah, let's take a 12, maybe 14 inch dream catcher. Big chin on the mic, knucklehead. Yeah, I know I definitely ain't gonna be trying to cut no billboards. I think I'm gonna stick with eight by tens. Try to get back in the swing of it. Oh yeah, for sure. Speak of the devil, Shay's in the house from Facebook saying hello. Hey, Shay. How you getting along with that box you're cutting out? You got to say one thing about her. She's a go-getter. She ain't afraid to try different stuff. Oh, I know. Well, that's, that's what I told her. I said, just jump in and do it. And then figure out your curve, your learning curve. Because there's a learning curve to everything. So, jump in and do it and then figure out what you got to do to change it to make it work for you 
<clears throat> which is the same thing you're going to have to do too. So, yeah. That's the only bad thing about it. That craftsman saw the arm don't raise up on it. But if there's a will, there's a way. Oh, yeah, exactly. She, uh, Shay says, good. Medicine had to bring me the other saw. LOL. So the cutting at the same time. That's awesome. Yeah, Shay, I uh, wrote that uh, recommendation on your page there because I felt you deserved it. Didn't want to sound too formal, though. <laughs> Excuse me. She's saying, well, I appreciate it. <laughs> so is Madison the one that's interested in scroll sawing too right now? Or is there anybody else in the house that wants to do it with you? That's what you should do. Get like a whole, get a whole bench full of scroll saws going by four or five. Imagine the production work you do for ornaments and stuff. <laughs> That's it. Have them <laughs> fellas <laughs> pumping it we, out. Yeah, we, we we need forty ornaments in two hours. Do it. <laughs> 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 He's gonna make you the whip. Yeah, it'll be a whole maker's collaboration. <laughs> Charles can do the patterns. I can I, I, I can resize them all for you. <laughs> sure, let him do it. <clears throat> she goes, Van, my seven year old is wanting to do this. He's bugging me. Yeah. If if, if you want, just start him out on a coping saw. <laughs> Yeah, there's a lot of younger folks that want to shy away from the old traditions we're working. Before this stroke, I was going to get my granddaughter into my daughter. Said, but that's all going to hurt. No, it will not. Come here and I'll show you. I'll cut my fingernails on it for you. Did you do it? Yeah, but she still won't let her get near any fire <laughs> tools. But yet, she'll let her go out and uh, ride uh, four-wheelers or go out shooting guns. But not a scroll saw. I said, well, she got her own saw machine. It's the same thing. But yeah, it's the exact same thing. My daughter... Being an overprotective mother on some things. Yeah, I was shocked one year. Me and uh, <clears throat> before we got, you know, the travel trailer, 
me and my wife used to go camping, you know, with the tent and everything. I yep. asked my daughter, I said, uh, Emma wants to come camping with us for the weekend. And uh, before she realized, she said yes, you know, she couldn't take it back after she said yes in front of Emma. <laughs> and I told her, I said, where well, we're going, there is no cell service, so you won't be able to call her for three days. She said that like to drove her nuts. Oh, it's like when I used to have my kids on the weekends, we'd, we'd I'd take them camping in a no cell service area just so their mother couldn't call them. You know, not yeah. to be a dick, but it was just because she they called them all the time. I'm like, you see them all the time. Just let me have my time with them. Yeah. Uh. Jay says, last year, Madison learned how to sew. Leonard Davis under that said, I made some Christmas ornaments with my grandfather about 50 years ago. <laughs> Simple cutouts. Hand painted and still hanging on the Christmas tree. That's awesome. And then like Jay says, Madison likes the saw better. Yeah. And Rusty Nails would chops in the house saying, hello, everybody. Hello, Russ. How's it going? <laughs> Glad to see you, my friend. I almost said Wes because I, like, I was watching him play games earlier, right? <laughs> and he was driving his car. I was like, ah, it's quite the rustic line you're driving there. <laughs> Look like a bunch of drunk drivers all over that road. Yeah, exactly. <clears throat> well, Russ, it's good to see you uh, picked her up. Well, when we, we see your back, so whether you dropped her off somewhere is a different story. <laughs> Did you uh, wear the trench coat and take balloons with you too, or what? He said, okay, Charles. <laughs> yeah, don't get him banned from this one. <laughs> oh, then, uh, Lee. Oh. Stop that. These here, no trench coat, says Russ. Len uh, Leonard Davis says, okay, good night, guys. All right, Leonard. Not. not. Kaylee says, uh, I'm not sure. I like the magnifying glass. I think I need to mount it differently. You know, you can always go to Harbor Freight and get you one of those jeweler lenses that you can put on your head, flip up yeah. and down. It's they work glasses, great. Yeah. Because I'm pretty sure I'm going to need a pair. <laughs> oh, she done gone. Well, it's like when I was over at Jeff's place last week. He uh, had me do a couple cuts on one of his, uh, his patterns there. So I got adjusted blades for him and stuff properly. And uh, he, he, I said, you got no magnifying glass. He, he gives me a pair of reading glasses. I'm like, whoa, these are way too strong. These will screw up my eyes. I think they were like plus 70 or something, he said. Jimmy Christmas. I know. They were strong.
Yeah, I know I need new glasses, but uh, you got to find out what's going on first. Get one medical bill taken care of before I get another one. Be going on Facebook, don't want to load for some reason. Well, I didn't want to get over anyway. Why am I yawning? I even slept. Yeah, that camera seems to be working great. Yeah, that's good. Yeah, I just got to figure out my lighting, though. This thing is... Well, maybe if I get a second one, because I can mount a... Probably mount, <clears throat> because he's got those uh, like camera mounts on the bottom, so you put them on stands and stuff. So I wonder if I can uh, get a couple of those. Buy a couple more of these cameras that I just need longer USB cords for. So I can run them wherever I want and just switch between them. Then, eh? That might work. Yep. That'll work. I'll try that. Jason's in the house saying hi, John. I think I figured out my lighting issue. Hey, Jason. Because I, I know I know he left me a message on the video this morning that he uh, didn't catch it. But uh, welcome to this one. So I know I mentioned you in the one this morning, but well, I wasn't making fun of you. I was just making fun of people in Calgary in general saying, oh, it's cold and stuff down there. It's colder than a well digger. So I don't know what it is with feather patterns, but I really enjoy cutting them out. I don't know why. I don't know whether it's the variety between the straight lines and the crooked lines, or whether it's just, I don't know. I find that cutting feathers is more <laughs> relaxing for me than anything else, though. I should do a whole feather theme thing. I love this wood, though. Shay said she's over on Twitch now that she can use uh, her phone. Do you want to come on? Come on, Shay. I know you want to come on. You want to come on. You want to show us all your your box. Well, your 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 box that you're cutting out of wood. <laughs> and, and don't uh, worry, I'm I'm not a flirt <laughs> like Charles. <laughs> we'll be nice. <laughs> I'm one of the one of the better ones. Oh, I should send you. No. You know what, Shay? I should send you the pattern of this uh, 
ring box that I did up. Because I know you'd love doing this, and there's no glue. Because uh, if you come on the show, I'll show it to you. If you don't, then you're not going to see it all. <laughs> don't look over there. You can't see it. <laughs> blackmail, blackmail, blackmail. Yeah, exactly. Russ says, uh, see what you did there, John? <laughs> Yep. Didn't you a smiley face laughing with tears? <laughs> you know, it's bad when you gotta use a magnifying glass to see those little suckers. Jason says, hot dog, hot dog. Well, you know. Before I got the magnifying glass, I was doing a lot of fine cutting stuff. And I was trying to follow the lines as best I could. And I was still running off them a bit. But when I got my magnifying glass, I found that I could actually do a lot more detail in a smaller area. Because I could see more clearly with the magnifying glass. And I know I, I, tried, I tried to convince Jeff, to, Jeff Murray to use one. And so he went out to bought one. He bought the same one I got. He tried it. He said, no, nope, I can't see through it. Because it, it's like uh, the video when Ava was watching, uh, how it was vibrating. Yeah. <clears throat> because the camera, because my, my phone was mounted to the magnifying glass. So the magnifying glass was bouncing. And uh, But the thing is, when, when, when I'm standing in front of it, it can bounce all it wants. And it's still focused for me because my eyes are focusing all the time anyway but when it's in the camera it's kind of hard it's harder to see that view is that got the fluorescent or the led uh this one's got fluorescent on it <clears throat> but i picked up a new led bulb that's the one i have over here because this one's freaking bright but it's more of a spotlight than anything else, though. Like, oh, that's actually a good spot right there for it. Oh, look at that! Because because I got my green tape on my on my table. You see my logo on the background. I just cover. I just cover my table with my green with green tape. <laughs> there's the my O. Oil. There's the O from my wood and an F. If there you go, see if I could. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that background noise on my end too loud. No, it's fine. It's it's fine. I'm used to background noise on your end, so. Well, the reason why I'm saying there ain't nobody in here but me now. She's done going to bed. She at least oh, it's just you. It off. Yeah, give me a second. But I'm supposed to be the one that's death in this household. There we go. Look at that. Carrie sharing my Carrie sharing my my YouTube stuff over on Facebook. Yes, sir. Dedicated. Employee, yeah. what if I could? Employee. <laughs> Think I should pay her? Well, that wasn't smart there, Einstein. What'd you do, hurt yourself again? No, uh, I didn't have my headphones on right, and they just slipped off and made a big bang. Ah.
get frustrating sometimes being one-sided. Yeah, I was going to put this uh, ring box right here for Shay to see. Just just sort of off camera, right? Look at this. It's cool ring box. Look at that. Ooh. See that, Shay? Oh, look at that. <laughs> Of course, you're having really crappy internet issues. <clears throat> She's just saying that. Look at that, Shay. See? So, this, uh, this ring box. Here, I'll flip this over for you. You said it's cute. So this ring box has a bottom. Oh, that's hard to see there, isn't it? Yep. There a bottom. you go. A bottom with four holes in it. It's got four sides. And it's got an inside and a topper. So you it, it, it can build it like a puzzle. And what I did, I, I built one for my, my daughter-in-law for their wedding. <sighs> it's a ring box. And, what it, and there's no glue. So it, it all pressure fits together. No glue. This, then the, the hinge is part of the uh, two pieces, part of the lid piece and the two end pieces. So it's just a circle in there. Uh, right there, just a circle in there, and then I took this piece out, and then I put some uh batting in there, like uh quilt batting, and then some fabric that matched their theme for the wedding. Then I put that back in and I pushed through, and there's just the ring sits there. And she uses it, uh, she puts it beside her night on her nightstand, so she takes her rings off at night. Or when she's doing dishes or whatever. There you go. And I st I stack cut these. <laughs> That's why I have two of them. And I gave her one. Jason says it looks good. And shh, don't tell Russ this. I got them off a CNC site. What? Yeah. I got the pattern off a CNC site. Charles and Cliff site? Yeah, Charles and Cliff. Oh, Shay's got a hazardous weather condition. Wind advisory in effect. So there's, I'm not so sleepy. there's a wind advisory, but there's severe drought in parts of eastern Nebraska and western Iowa. Jason says, John C., good job. Thanks, Jason. <clears throat> Thanks, Shay. <sighs> yeah, I, uh, I I downloaded it from, from a CNC site, and I don't know. No, sorry, I downloaded it from a laser site. And uh, I got uh, I got a bunch of a bunch of patterns that I got off a laser site. And I, think, I think they're SVG files, and I just converted them to PDFs, put them in my Corel, resized them, and uh, for whatever size wood I was using. So I basically just drew a box beside it, sized it to the size of wood I'm using, and then I just scaled my drawing down to it. So that because uh, that's one eighth one eighth inch thick wood, so I just scaled my drawing down. For the side profile, I was using one eighth wood. Just printed it off. So there you go. Oh, is that what Madison cut today? That's kind of cool too. Come on, you got to share it. Can I show everybody, Shay?
Oh, I gotta wait till she says yes. Blasphemy. <laughs> Blasphemy. <laughs> yeah, I got it from a laser. There's a lot of cool laser patterns though that are awesome for in uh for uh, uh scroll saw work. <clears throat> like uh uh making uh uh book boxes and curved tops and stuff because they they, they do these patterns uh like a, a laser here I'll let me show you. So a laser would cut out the pattern like this uh, right there. So the laser cuts out the pattern like this, right? And then it would do a second pass inside of that one like this. So with that pattern, cut out laser right all the way through the wood, you can actually take the wood and curve it like that without breaking the wood. And I'm like, I can do the same thing with a scroll saw. So I tried it and it's a little more difficult with a uh, quarter inch wood. So you gotta use skinnier wood, like 1 16th wood. Uh, yes, CNC does it also, but like, it, it, with the laser, it's quick and quick and easy to do. So I took the laser patterns and I converted them to, like I said, PDF, and then threw them in my corral. So I sized them up the way I wanted to. So I got all these book pat book book pattern like, like Bible books, Bible book boxes that I'm gonna do up as well. So this is what Shady's daughter did today, Madison. She did this butterfly. That is awesome. Yeah, it's awesome. So this is her second cut then. Yeah, was her second time ever. Not too bad. Yeah, it's pretty cool. So she's got a cow and a butterfly. Oh, Wait, is that a song? Gonna, gonna pass you up there. Yeah, is that a song? Cow and butterfly. No. <laughs> it was dog and butterfly. My dog heart. and butterfly. <laughs> it was close. <laughs> oh no, man! I am showing my age. <laughs> yeah, but I need the song though. <laughs> uh, that song come back out in the 1970s. Yeah, it's pretty much the, the 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 box you're building is pretty much the same as that ring box, and it's more it, it's more uh, uh, tenon, uh, more than tenon joints on the corners. Oh, uh, I'm trying to figure out. Uh, yeah, they're they're like uh, finger joint finger joint corners is is what your box is like, and these uh, the, these more than tenon joint ones are kind of cool too because these are all pressure fit as well. Only problem is I, I glued the bottom on this one, so I can't pull this one apart. So, had I just set it in there, I could pull it apart too. Quick, get the glue. Yeah. Yeah, you can flat pack them anywhere, can't you? What's that? And you can produce your nose and send them out and flat pack, couldn't you? Oh, yeah, for sure. Being gay to put on that knee. So, so I got some more entry holes to do on that. So I'll leave that for now. But what I was planning on doing with this was uh, uh, usually the, the, there's just the one feather cut out and on a bigger background. But what I'm going to do, I'm actually going to do like a one eighth hairline around this whole thing. But I'll take my time and do it, and I'll do a one-eighth hairline around the whole feather. That way, I can cut the feather out so it'll hang by itself, so I can join them up with these feathers here as well. Choo -choo. And I did what these. What are those my, made out of? Uh, these ones are aromatic cedar. Uh, I did them up for my mom, and she actually had them hanging in her uh, her uh, rear view mirror on her vehicle. And I made these ones in. 2013 so you can't really see it but i 
burn my name in it. So I, I sign it with a, with a paragraph pen and I date them as well. So this is 0413. So these are seven years old and they were hanging in my, uh, like I said, my, my, my mom's rear view mirror. They're still in pretty good shape. I get these out of one of the uh, uh, scroll saw magazines. Air Max Eater is really fun to cut too. Yeah, so I think I'll put these feathers along with those feathers. But like I said, I'm going to do a one eighth outline around this. And then I'll uh, probably tie some leather around it. And I could probably, because I already drilled pilot, uh, entry holes for these uh, balls, uh, balls, beads, I'll, I'll just leave them on there. But I think if I'm going to do another set of these, I think I'll just uh, put a straight line down there and I can actually get these beads from Michael's and I'll put them on there at the same time. Yeah, she said, she said I want a dream catcher now. Dude, that's so cool. I need to sign my stuff now that I'm getting better. No, you should always sign your stuff regardless. Even if you just sign on the back. Because I know uh, for for intarsia work... <clears throat> I'm going to the camera here for a sec. <clears throat> I know for, uh, for intarsia work, what a lot of people do is they'll sign the back <clears throat> uh, either in pen or marker and they'll write down all the woods that they used because a lot of people that do in charge and try to go with natural colored woods to match the pattern they're doing. So it'll be like blue heart, poplar, uh, redwood, blah, 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 whatever. And, uh, well, okay. Then it must've been for my dad that I did them for. <clears throat> so then, uh, um, that way there's uh, a list of, of what they used in the entire work and they signed the work and date and stuff like that too. Uh, uh, you can also do up, uh, if you go on Steve Good's site, he has a uh, certificate of authenticities and I, I can't remember when we started doing those, but I, I basically took the same certificate of authenticity, changed it a bit, put little turtles on it. I got a turtle and a tortoise on the corners, uh, changed it up a bit, put my name on and gave those out when I gave out, uh, to the customers and stuff, uh, certificate of authenticities, dated them, numbered them. Uh, I kept the log of everything I cut. And I don't do that anymore. I just keep pictures and uh, sign your stuff. Don't be afraid. It, it, if you're proud of your work, sign your name to it. Don't doesn't matter what it looks like. Sign your name to your work <clears throat> because that way, way down the road in the future, you can go look. Like like well, with Madison's work, for example, uh, date it because the thing is like, like uh, first cut. Uh, 2020 or the first cut November 2020 second cut November 2020 and the thing is it, it'll show your progress all the way through because like when when uh, she wants to show her kids uh, scroll saw work then she can go look I, I made this back in 2020 when I was 14 or however old she is when she's showing her daughter right <clears throat> or grandma can pull it out from the the, the hutch and go <laughs> look Oh, you'd be talking to your grand, your grand, grand, grandchildren. Oh, look what your mommy made. <clears throat> yeah, sign it or pick up a. Uh, uh, I got one here somewhere. I know I have two of them. I had two of them. Oh, it's over there. Just give me one sec. <clears throat> Time's up. Been a second. <laughs> it's a pyrography set from Walnut Hollow. It's probably one of the cheapest sets you can get. Uh, I got my at Michael's. I think it was. 15 bucks and comes with your pyro pen comes with a stand set on the table when it's on and heat warming up uh there's a heat adjustment on no not on this one this one's just on off but it comes with uh a lot of different bits as well this one's got an exacto knife uh pinpoint uh, a couple branding irons 
different tips for shading. And I usually use this this chisel point here to uh, sign my names with. Or you can use the pinpoint one right there to sign your names with as well. It's just something quick and easy. And if you want to start get, getting into branding or wood burning, it it's a, it's a good set to start off with too. Because it's got everything you need in there too. Oh, and uh, old school people used to use these flat, this flat branding one uh, on the on the on the wood burners to uh, transfer your your pattern right onto the wood. But when I do them now, I just use uh, uh, um, my laser ink. She says so far my favorite was Charles's pattern. Then she says I have one from Amazon. It's a nice little set to have. It, it, it it's always good to have a wood burner around. It's always good to have a wood burner, some like a small set of carving chisels, and just seem to do all kinds of cool stuff. Or a Dremel. Dremel's work. Dremel works good too. Yeah, I think I'd be lost without mine. Oh, we ain't going. Yeah, so I got to cut some more entry holes in here, but we can start on this one. And if you want to cheat, <coughs> start with cheating. If you want uh, quick and easy patterns, go to Michael's or Hobby Lobby or whatever and pick up like cheap little ornaments made out of wood that are all laser cut and deconstruct them and then use them as your own patterns and designs and stuff. Um, I do have a set of trophy mounts that I downloaded off of uh, a site as well. And I got uh, like life-size moose, deer, uh, rhino, warthog, a wolf, a fox, a rabbit, all trophy mounts with these cool shield backers on them. And uh, I haven't cut those out yet, but I want to. I just got to figure out what kind of wood I'm going to use for them. Probably quarter inch, half inch. And thing is, you can size them to whatever size you want to. <laughs> so I got a bunch of uh, antlers. I was going to add real antlers onto them with. But that's another story. Oh, there's one more project that I know I have to do. I can name one right off the top of my head. What? Footballs. Yeah, I already know that. One. See, but the thing is, so so with the next football one I have to do, uh, the baby is not even born yet, so I have at least six months to get that one done. <laughs> she says that's not a rush. Oh. So she, she doesn't need that one for Christmas, but I know I could do it pretty quick. God, why am I so crazy? But no, uh, when we dropped my mother-in-law off, I was talking with John, my brother-in-law, 
that uh, I've actually never really cut them or made them anything. I did a door sign for him once with a fish on it because he's a fish, he's a fly fisherman. And I never really made him anything. And I know I was going to make him a Christmas present this year. So I can probably do that on a video. Maybe next week, maybe. That's going to be a cool video, though. I can't even tell you what it is. Oh. Yeah. Bait, baiting that hook, are you? Yeah. <clears throat> but he's a... Uh, he watches sports, and I asked him what his favorite team was, and he told me. But it's a Canadian hockey team. But only from one certain point in time. That's when they won the Stanley Cup. So, we were at the antique mall, and I bought a bunch of stuff for it, so I'm going to build a shadow box display for him. Oh, excuse me. But I got to get some hockey sticks first. Oh, I think I remember you, you talking about that a while back. Yeah, my biggest deal is right now, there's so many patterns out there, and I got so many patterns up here in this cabinet above my desk. I just don't know which one I want to get out there and do first. Almost like me, I got so many patterns <clears throat> backlogged that I want to cut. <clears throat> I got so many patterns that I've designed that I want to cut. <sighs> I just don't know which one I want to do first, but I know that I, I always get stuff passed in the middle. Yeah. Because I had a phone call the other day. Somebody wants me to make them a fish. And I, I can't remember. I got to call her back again because I can't remember what she wants on it. But she wants me to make her a 3D fish. And she wants it weighted. Like I, I told her, like she told me, she told me the idea that she wanted. And I told her, well, I'm going to have to weight it because she wants to go ice fishing with them. And she wants to put like a uh, happy anniversary on it or happy birthday on or something like that so i gotta make it waterproof i gotta wait it because she wants to put it on the fish line what when they're out ice fishing so that she can go hell oh, you caught something on your line right <laughs> so that he pulls it up and it'll be this fish that i made for her, or for him well, that'll be pretty neat yeah so i gotta figure out how to, how i'm gonna make it i gotta get some valspar urethane for it and everything else so <laughs> She says, uh, oh, my internet's so dumb. You know, um, go go down to your, your electronic store or your computer store, whatever, and look for a, uh, a Wi Fi booster because I because my uh, my, my Wi Fi, uh, what's the box called? Uh, receiver is in the basement in the house, and I got a booster in my kitchen, and I got one right at my door so. It, it boosts the signal all the way out to my shop here where I am. And I'm, at, I'm at the back end of my shop. And the only time I have problems is when uh, somebody hits the power pole or the internet goes down or somebody hits a cable pole. See, I think that's what I'm going to need if I do that. So the box is at one end of the trailer and all the interference to the front. Yeah, because if you put a Wi-Fi booster, like, uh, where your box is, or 
just get your box put in and then put a Wi-Fi booster at the window right beside where you're working at, then it should work fine. You know, I didn't think about that until you said that. So now that was my problem a couple years ago when uh, I was on Charles's other feeds, on his other shows and stuff. That before I had that put in, uh, I had really crappy internet, really crappy Wi-Fi. Or you get uh, get your computer out there or your camera with your uh, Cat5 cable hooked right up to it directly. That way you don't have that issue either. Yeah, but that's... I'd need 40 feet. Yeah, but you can always just buy a 100-foot roll and then put your own ends on it. You know, if I ain't thinking, I think I still have a bunch of Cat5 cable and cleaver in the garage. Because, like, when we're at work and we're running digital boards, uh, the, the maximum distance you can run Cat5 cable is 300 feet. Uh, any longer than 300 feet, then you need an extra booster. Which we had to run one for one sign. Because it was, like, exactly uh, 304 feet to the bottom of the pole. And then we had to run it up the pole, 25 feet, and then 15 feet across over to the next receiver. So we needed a booster at the bottom of the pole. Sure, Shay. Blame the wind. <laughs> Somebody's got to be blamed. You're supposed to blame it on the rain. Yay. Rainy days and Mondays. Always get me down. Oh, man. Hot flash. Oh. How bad is it I have the carpenters bring a sound? Like greatest songs on my freaking iPad. I iTunes. She said, um, she said, this box is going to take me a while. LOL. I'm almost done with one side. Take your time. Don't rush yourself. You burn yourself out. Yeah. Karen, Karen could sing some songs, but she just got a little mixed up in the head. What a waste. Yep. Well, it says, blame it on Rio. Carpenter. Well, that Actually, what wasn't uh, weren't the carpenters like brother, brother and sister, and weren't they Mormon as well, just like Donnie and Marie? Yeah, I don't know about being Mormon or not, but I know they were brother and sister.
Oh, Lord. Oh, hope that wind ain't too loud for you. No, it's fine. You know, I'm not really going to miss you about it anyway, so. Going through menopause. Got the windows open and still have them hot. What's that? I said I got the windows open and I'm still hot. That's who I haven't seen in the chat. Maybe there was somebody missing. What, who? Larry. Oh, yeah. Hey, your, mic, your mic seems to be quieted down. Do what? <sighs> your mic is quiet now. Did you change to a different mic? Oh, I still got the same one. I think it's just because it's up underneath my chin. Oh, okay. Because I moved it to uh, try to block some of the wind. No, it was fine. But I still haven't heard back from Dennis. You haven't, eh? Neither have I. I hope he's all right. Yeah, so October 30th, that was the last time I talked to him. So that was, what, two weeks ago, right? No, yeah. was, uh, no that was a week ago. Yeah, I sent him a message on the 6th. Yeah, one week is the last time I talked to him. Yeah, it's weird to have heard from him for a week, though. Yeah, because usually, you know, he sends me messages in the morning commenting on something I posted. Man, Mom, doesn't it feel like someone's watching us? Like shadows in the dark? Um, no, but I should be concerned. <laughs> Shay, you're supposed to say, get to bed. You're not supposed to get up right now. I hear voices. Yeah, what you do is set him to bed and start turning the lights on and off and rattle a chain down the hallway or something. <laughs> you don't go to sleep. I am going to get you. <sighs> Oh, Lordy. 11 o'clock.
Hope that one of these days I can get my sleeping schedule back on track. That ain't gonna hold my breath. <laughs> Shit, he says, of course, right after that, the wind, <laughs> wind hit and came down the fireplace. Mom, did you hear that? <laughs> <laughs> Too funny. Did you know? Did you know that I actually slept in this morning? Must Little be notes. nice. Yeah. Well, I stayed up late last night until about twelve thirty, forcing myself to stay awake so I could actually try and get some sleep in this morning. And uh, I actually didn't wake up till. Didn't wake up till 8.30. Carrie's like, do you know what 8.30? I'm like, sure. Thanks for waking me up. <laughs> Carrie said it might be a long night here. <sighs> Have fun with that. You know what you need? You need one of those white noise machines. Whoosh, whoosh, whoosh. That's sleeping. Yes, eight thirty. Well, so like I said, I, I, I stayed awake till about twelve thirty. Slept until eight thirty, so that's only eight eight hours. And uh, yeah, it's only eight hours. So uh, usually I go from I usually go to bed at eleven and get up at six. So that's uh, seven hours. <clears throat> It was weird because, like, usually my body just wakes up anyway. Yeah, that's me. I'll lay down there and sleep a couple hours, and right back up I am. It takes me forever to go back to sleep. Well, I think this is going to be my last cut anyway, though. Okay, then. It's getting close to your bedtime. They said we get up every two hours or so. Quite adding it up. But I'm not sure we actually sleep. Yep. Why do you get up so often? I oh, wake oh, up, uh, Shay. So when you leave your saw at night, try and pull the tension off your saw so that your your blade isn't tight still. Because the thing is, is that it, if you leave your blade tight, it actually stretches your blade. If it's still a good blade, so you either pull the tension off or make sure that you just undo your blade if you leave it for the night. Well, right. I bet that blade I got in that saw stretched from here to Dallas. <laughs> I've just been right. that way for two years. Yay. Oh, God, you scared me. Oh. He said I'd take my blade down oh. because of the kids. <laughs> <coughs> Oh, wait, Halloween's over. I shouldn't be doing that. <laughs> so, look how bright that light is. Wow. Yeah, it's weird now because my camera's up here and I'm looking over here. Put your camera. <laughs> 
go way over here now. So I'm uh, going to leave this for tonight. I will be back on tomorrow. Uh, we'll see how long I sleep in tomorrow now. <laughs> nope, because I'm calling you at 645 my time. I believe it. So, oh, hey, here's a point. <laughs> so so I, I had a bank appointment yesterday. So I went to the bank and, you know, just, just it, it's what I do. So I, I go to the bank. I shave before I went to the bank, right? So, you know, I, I'm all clean shaven and everything else. I, I, I don't I don't know if you can see it, though. So right, yes, it's hard to see, actually. Right here, it looks like I got a bald spot right there. It, it, it looks like I shaved in too far and then brought it back out again to match my beard line. But uh, <laughs> it, it's either blonde hair or gray hair right there. And it looks like a big dip in my freaking cheek. It looks like it shaved in too far. <laughs> it's, like, it's like I'm... Uh, uh heinz 57 yeah got my gray coming in got my red coming in got my brown up here and dark hey, brown over here get it like this whole fellers got my gray and red hair on my chest coming in <laughs> well we didn't need to know all that and down further it's blonde and red and i really do want to know about that <laughs> when i was born that was the color of my hair. I was a ginger. <laughs> we won't tell anybody though. I still got freckles. Can't see them though. I got freckles. Like st I still got red hair. But so I'm done for the night. Uh, thanks for being on the panel, Herb. And I hope we get more people tomorrow. I'll show you how far along all the uh, staining went. I know we, get, we had to do a couple more coats on the red because the red, uh, the Sedona red is a nice color. Uh, the more coat you put on, the deeper it is. And it actually like pulls all the grain out and it looks so cool. Um, as you can see on this one. Okay, okay, I, she's going gray. <sighs> Because this one is uh, this maple leaf is Sedona red, and oof, I think I got three coats of red on that. It just pulls the colors right out into it, and and let, like you can see all the grain, all the grain lines. I went to get all the dust off. <laughs> all the grain lines just pull right through on that. Have you ever and, took a damp sponge and wiped over it first, and then uh, stained them to raise the grain? Yeah. Yeah, uh, I, I tried that a couple times. It it really doesn't. Uh, <clears throat> it really doesn't do it on plywood. Um, it does it more on the hard on the hardwoods though. Uh, but uh, this is also why it helps to have a Dremel because when uh, I did it, I did this for my dad's retirement for the military. He was uh, electrical mechanical engineer, so that that's his cap badge, and I use a Dremel to get the fine detail in there after i scroll followed it out i used a dremel on there and i used my pyro pen to do uh, on the un logo i don't even, i don't know if you can really see that or not on the un logo you can see all the uh the uh lines for the uh latitude and longitude on there yeah and i used the, the pyro pen for that so scroll saw scroll scroll saw scroll saw that out scroll saw that out that out and then use a pyro pen on that and then my dremel on this just to get the extra detail in there so there you go so that that's like a multi project and it's layered do 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 they made standoffs for it just to make a standoff like that and i didn't use a frame because i think the look the work looks cool when it hangs off the edges like that <laughs> and that's actually why charles does it too because it looks cool when the Mains and their ears hang off the edge of the frames. Yeah. But anyway, have a good night and uh, I'll see you tomorrow. Yeah. Thanks a lot, Herb. And uh, thanks everybody for in the group there. And uh, going gray is a sign of knowledge and maturity, Shay. Just keep that in mind. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So I'll thanks a lot, everybody. See you later, Russ. All right. I'll talk to you later. And we're almost.